I'm the world's best backwards driver. You just watch this right here, lover boy. Welcome back, baby brothers. And uh, today we have a 206.7, 1.7 seconds behind the pole position. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys like the music. I'm trying out some new stuff. Uh, so yeah, we're starting in like P12, immediately moving down to P13 as 11, that's his name is Thomas, moves up our inside. 18, looking to take a little nibble up the inside, but not quite going to uh, hold enough speed. He actually ends up going side by side with 22, and I am giving my slipstream to car number 22, so hoping that he can get past 18. Uh, he should be a slower driver, so I would, I would rather have him behind me than 18. Up ahead, Thomas has got, uh, he's looking to make a move around the outside not gonna work out for him i swear that move never works out the brightest rear quarter panel of all fucking time on this dude for whatever reason up the mountain for the first time riding p13 behind thomas uh first time up the mountain in any track is really just about kind of being cautious there's a high likelihood that somebody has an accident and if somebody does have an accident there's a high likelihood that a lot of people get caught up in it so i want to kind of sit back i don't want to put pressure on thomas i would like him to go through safely because i don't want him to wreck i don't want to wreck into him so i back off a little bit there that actually puts 22 pretty close to me car number eight does not know how to hold the 50 50 grind into the wall he goes that's right ahead of us so we slow down thomas makes it through safe we make it through safe but behind us all hell is uh, gonna break loose as car number four looks for a super heroic move up the inside this guy gets rear-ended rear ends somebody then he gets rear-ended and this is very reminiscent of the scene from lion king the uh yeah the stampede scene put that music over and see how it fits it's pretty accurate car number 24 the only person to reasonably slow down and he makes it through there just about fine we do skate away with basically nobody behind us now except for this martini car and then there's a pretty big gap behind him the car ahead kind of pulled away we slowed down a lot more than him trying to avoid that accident very easily we uh, could have gotten caught up in that kind of lucky that we got through there 22 not able to make a move as he's not close enough by the end of the straight and uh, we are safely going to come around now back into p12 from gaining that position um down the mountain so back up to where we started to start lap two and uh thomas pretty far ahead of us but there are some cars pretty close together ahead of him 25 is going to go side by side with six make contact he is going to run into the wall pool in front of car number 20 who's ahead of us so we'll gain both of those positions thomas has to slow down for that accident so that's going to put us right onto the back of him which is fantastic it means we're going to have slipstream and somebody to work together with to try and catch the cars ahead and I'd say we have about a two, maybe a three or four tenths to Thomas at the moment, which is just about perfect. It puts you in a really good spot when you come onto the straight. Both of us going to completely whiff and uh, miss the apex in unison, but uh, we do have each other's slipstream. I'm not gonna be close enough to push him. However, this is a really good example of how much time you actually gain on this straight. I started this straight probably a half a second, maybe slightly more than that behind him, and already we're about halfway through. Look at the speed I'm gaining. Holy shit, we are flying up on him. Like, we were almost able to make a move from six tenths behind him onto the straight. Pretty insane. So, uh, that's. It, it makes for some very interesting driving on this track. We are going to skip forward ahead now to lap number five basically in the exact same position we're just kind of following thomas around and car number nine ahead of thomas is going to break super late up the inside of the final turn run into the wall and as me and thomas come across just a few moments later we are both going to pick up that position so that will put me into p9 and thomas into p8 car number 22 has been riding along with us on this entire journey we're about halfway through the entirety of the race now and we have made some good time towards the cars ahead it's looking like potentially if we stayed at this pace we could definitely gain a few more positions and whipping ahead now we have just about caught the bwt car you can see him right ahead of thomas and there we go this is the final lap everybody so we're in a situation where we could potentially gain two positions up into p7 Coming around the first turn of the last lap and checking our previous lap time, 205.7, we have definitely picked up the pace towards the end of this race. Uh, tires heating up plus less fuel will kind of lend yourself to that. I'm really hoping that Thomas can catch this Alpine car before we get onto the straight. Uh, that way they're, they're impeding each other onto the straight and perhaps giving me an advantage over both of them. As we come up onto the mountain, Thomas is starting to put pressure onto the BWT car. It's just about impossible to put a move down on somebody down the mountain unless they make a mistake. So 
no matter how close you are, I mean, you're really relying on the person ahead to fuck up in order for you to get past, and I'm sure that's what Thomas is hoping for. We are just trying to keep about a three or four, uh, three or four tenth gap between Thomas and myself. We saw how much time we gained on that last straight, and I'm hoping for a similar run this time around. Thomas will also have the slipstream of the car ahead, so we'll have double slipstream. Getting right up on Thomas as we come through the double, triple chicane, I'm not sure exactly what the name of that is down the mountain super fun part of the track and rounding it out most important corner of the race we definitely over slow on the entry uh, but we get a decent exit which kind of makes up for it 22 has kind of fallen off down the mountain that time as we are all hauling ass we are in a perfect little row here thomas is getting a ton of speed we are getting a ton of speed as well definitely not going to have enough for us to catch anybody the uh, alpine car at the front weaving trying to break the toe thomas maybe no, no, he's not going to look for a move here. Looks like uh, if he is going to look for a move, it's going to be into the final corner. And Alpine gets a poor run onto that corner right there. Th Thomas is going to be right on his tail, looking to go around the outside. We have an option. We're going to choose to slide underneath Thomas, follow Alpine through on the inside. But we give it slightly too much throttle. Pause. What the fuck, dude? What the fuck? Okay, um, we gave it way too much throttle, sliding out, overcorrecting. We slide across the track. We're going to lose P9 to car number 22. 12 is coming up, and we are reversing backwards across the line to claim P10. Uh, style finish right there. Extra points for style finish. I'm not upset about that. All right, so here are the results for that one. Uh, we finished in P10, could have been a P7 potentially, really fucked that one up. Uh, Gain safety rating and I rating. We're about to break back into 4K. We've been struggling recently. The guys at the front, man, that's Bernardo Feria with, uh, he's a 10K I racer, 204.8, almost a second faster than our fastest lap. Before we get into the next race, I want to go over the qualifying, and this is basically just one of my hot laps. So this was our second qualifying lap, last qualifying lap of uh, this qualifying session. And we're gonna show the telemetry and an outside perspective for you. Braking after the 100, about halfway between the 100 and the 50 board right there. You wanna get on the gas super early there, which means you need to trail off really early as well to get the car turned in and bite that camber around the first corner. Uh, the line down the straight, I don't think it really matters too much. Some people like to shift up to six right here as you go downhill. I stay in fifth. Uh, it's just less downshifting I have to do right here. It makes this turn more consistent for me. Down into third, catch that grip and uh, immediately get on the throttle. You can push all the way over that curve on your left side. Get as close to this wall as you can so you can cut across braking where the wall kind of comes to you and then uh, get really close to this wall. Once again, getting on the throttle a lot earlier than you think. The camber helps you out a lot. You want to keep the foot all the, the way down there or as far down as you possibly can. Very, very slight lift there. You actually can take that one flat out. I don't think I did on this, uh, on this lap. Getting close to that wall, cutting into that curb and getting close to this wall, turning in before that curb on your right side and then getting on the power before the curb on your left side riding all the way out braking before that banner down to fourth third and you're going to go down to second you really have to modulate your brakes here slight push to uh, get a better angle into that little drop down camber section and as we head into the final corner brake before that wall lift start braking again shift down to second you want to get as close as you can i actually totally missed the apex here turned in a way too late you can turn in a lot earlier there than you think, and the camber will help turn the car at the bottom of the hill. That is uh, my main fault on this track. This straight is, is uh, it's basically crested, so the middle is very high. So if you go back and forth, you're actually losing speed because you're having to go slightly uphill over and over again. So choose a side and stick to it. Uh, six gear braking at that 150 or just slightly after trail off and get on the throttle just before that curb be careful you you do have to build up the pressure slowly there if you go full throttle very easy to spin when the car lands after you kind of jump that curb braking after the 100 down to second and very very smooth onto the throttle here super easy to spin out there as i have done so many times and that'll be a 205.8 which is good enough for pole position only four or three one thousandths ahead of Carlos. And we have Daniel Gray here, who's also a uh, content creator. A uh, big shout out to him. And without further ado, let us set out on our quest to uh, claim P1. It's going to go pretty poorly to start it off, losing it to car number three there as he pulls around the outside of us. Big surprise there. Big, big, big. 
big surprise there, right? Uh, we're going to be able to follow him on the racing line, though, because the cars behind were fighting just ever so slightly. It's going to slow both of them down, so we're kind of safe here to take the racing line. Lightning McQueen looking to go up the inside of Daniel Gray, but Daniel Gray makes a move to the inside to defend it. Car ahead of us, the current leader, goes super wide into T1, and we will take that position as well as I think a couple of others may, may end up uh, sliding through there. Yep, uh, looks like the cat car is going to follow us through up the mountain for the first time we we want to get away from these guys as quickly as possible i know it's going to be difficult these are some fast drivers behind us uh i don't think their qualifying was um telling of their true pace i think a lot of these guys are faster than their qualifying would lead you to believe flying around the mountain uh a little slow through this sector right here it's very easy to go super wide we end up 50 50 grinding even uh while we slowed down a little bit more car behind us uh he's keeping good time to us the car behind him this was the previous leader same situation the cat car is going to end up driving into the wall though slowing down car number three daniel gray makes a good move to the inside of what will be the turn onto the straight and he's going to make it work at least for one position uh, getting ahead of car number three for p3 himself the uh i think this is a mark Kini car, yeah, car number one now looking to make a move onto car number three. Daniel riding right behind the Caterpillar car who managed to gather it up and hold P2, although losing quite a lot of time to us. Daniel's looking to make a move around the outside into the corner at the end of the straight. They make very slight contact, go side by side through it. Daniel goes into the grass, comes back on pit maneuvers this guy, and then car number three tries to take evasive maneuvers, uh, ends up hitting him. Lightning McQueen coming out of nowhere, and uh, he's going to settle behind Daniel now, who has lost a position to the Martini car as he kind of had to slow down after that entire accident had happened. And uh, now car number one is sitting in P2. I am, I'd say, four or five seconds up the road to start lap two. And I've, I, I'm aware of this, obviously. I'm looking at my relative. And my goal was kind of to save tires for just a little bit because I, I it's happened to me so many times where... I'm pulling away, I'm pulling away from people as the leader, and then towards the end of the race, my pace just completely falls off. So I was trying to do all that I could to not have that happen. Lightning McQueen chasing down Daniel Gray, who goes uh, over the curb into the dirt. McQueen, they're almost entering side by side down the mountain. McQueen ends up locking up his tires, and Gray keeps that position, and nobody really gets hurt there. It does look like the uh, group behind is starting to condense slightly. 16 is moving on to McQueen, and by the time they enter onto the straight, he's got a pretty good... Uh, or a pretty small gap, I should say, to McQueen. So that's going to yield him a really good run down the straight. We are still maintaining our gap, just trying to set some consistent laps. This is only the second lap of the race, and uh, everybody is still kind of warming up their tires and everything. Either way, I'm not really too concerned. I feel pretty confident in myself to hold this. This is uh, lap five, and all of that confidence is going to be thrown directly into the toilet as the end of the straight is approaching, and... I get I think I just built too much throttle I maintained steering too far to the left as the car landed they are sliding out to the side that's going to put car number one and Daniel Gray through and uh, Lightning McQueen as well so re we rejoin the track now in P4 and it looks like they're side by side up ahead Daniel Gray perhaps looking to switch back onto car number one to start lap six one moves for a semi-defensive line a pretty de defensive line honestly and that is going to slow these guys down which is exactly what I need as the gap from me to these guys is pretty large at the moment we, uh, I'd say it's probably about five or six seconds we completely reversed it he pushes car number one and then stays on the inside doesn't go for the move though car number one does pretty good there to break as late as he possibly can. Honestly, it looked like he broke really late there. You can see the gap behind. Yeah, we are uh, sadly not um, not really within slipstream or any kind of hope. The only hope we really have at this point is knowing that they could end up fighting each other. And my tires that I was working so hard to save are now overheated, so I'm uh, not able to ever really push the way I wanted to initially, which really sucks. Overheating your tires in this car does affect your lap times. Uh, it, or honestly, it, it affects more of the way the car drives. Once you settle into it, you can get the car to drive at your at your uh, pace, but it definitely takes some adjustments. Down the mountain, and we're overslowing at the end of it for sure. We're being slightly cautious. We want the tires to cool down a little bit uh, and don't want to make any more stupid mistakes that could send us down any further. P4 is already hurting my brain as uh, I did lead the race for five laps, which, which is sad, but that happens. 
it was a semi-decent run onto the straight, but it's not going to matter because all three of these guys basically have slipstream. Car number one did well to pull away from Daniel Gray on the mountain, but the slipstream is super strong. Daniel looking up the inside, he's going to end up backing out as once again, car number one breaking just about as late as is humanly possible. Great braking by him. Car number four soaking up that slipstream, just kind of watching that battle, and uh, we are pretty far behind. This is lap nine, and the gap honestly has perhaps grown. I haven't been putting in fantastic laps. You can see I did a 206.5 on my last one. Daniel still chasing this guy down. Car number one taking a semi-defensive line. Not a very smart defensive line into this corner particularly because uh, if you ever find yourself on the outside, you're toast. And sure enough, that's what's going to happen here. I get wanting to take a semi-defensive line into a lot of these corners because you're able to dart to the outside and get a better entry. But on that corner specifically, it's just not worth it. As the outside car, it doesn't matter matter if you have a better entry you're gonna lose that position and um, that is a mistake that I feel like this guy was opening himself up to quite a lot in this race as he was taking semi-defensive lines anytime he had to defend he wasn't uh, very often taking a full on defensive line Daniel does well to pull away from him through the mountain which is going to keep him safe down the straight we have a lapped car behind us uh, so there's really no pressure I think the car behind us a, on the same lap was probably I don't know 12 seconds behind us he was pretty far and uh, we're still doing our best to chase these guys down. Not really too much avail. At this point, I'm basically just hoping that they wreck. They were driving much faster than me at this point. I was probably losing three tenths every every lap. Lap number 10, the situation is uh, reversed from the, situ from the lap before. Car number one now chasing Daniel down. And Daniel is going to have oversteer go off track and uh, get his tires in the dirt. So that's definitely going to hurt his run down the straight. And sure enough, it is. He slides behind car number one, who once again, it seems like, is going to want to maintain a semi-defensive line. He's sitting in the middle of the track, moves over to the racing line. But Daniel isn't quite close enough to take advantage of that one. So they will remain in this position. Car number four is edging ever closer to the these guys as they continue to uh, impede each other slightly with their defense and offense that's being thrown down up the mountain for this is lap 10 still so we have two laps left and you love to see this a three-way fight for the lead with two laps left on Mount Panorama it doesn't happen super often a lot of times when it is this type of situation um, it's not really people switching positions it's more people just chasing each other down this is the penultimate lap and similar situation at the moment if there is going to be some moves throw down thrown down it needs to start happening pretty soon because uh, you wait too long and the opponent gets one good run through the mountain and you are done so Daniel getting right up behind car number one beautiful run on the penultimate lap hitting that apex fantastically and he is in as good of a place as you could possibly be uh, coming onto this straight, getting right behind him, soaking up that slipstream. One is holding what will be the inside. Daniel looking to go around the outside, uh, but we're going to pause. Please remember to like and subscribe. <laughs> Actually, fuck that. I can't take myself seriously asking for that. I want to earn your subscription as a fucking man. Same wager. This octopus in that bucket. If I can make this octopus in that bucket, you have to subscribe. I'm going to be standing. I'll probably stand like right here. Shot myself in the foot a bit there. Uh, back to the race. Daniel is, he's looking to go around the outside, but switching to the inside at the last second as car number one, once again, taking a semi-defensive line in the middle. And I feel, I, I'm just not a fan of that. They're going side by side into the turn at the end of the straight. Looks like they will stay side by side for the penultimate corner. Slight contact. And then they run into each other. Sick ass fucking drift, baby. Until they run into the wall and wreck horrendously. So uh, breaking this down, it looks like they made what honestly could be attributed to netco contact. And then one just completely cuts it across the track and kills Daniel. Initial uh, contact, I'd say, is a racing incident. That one I would put on car number one. Wow, nice job, man. He was not happy. Daniel Ocon. I'm not sure what Victor said, uh, but you would be hard pressed to convince me that it was a full sentence. Um, we do end up catching up to Daniel here now as he has lost a tremendous amount of speed. Nice job, man. Victor gets to come first, I get to come second, and you get to come fourth. Apparently, Daniel forgot about number three because here I am in third and I could claim second as well.
This is the final lap. Daniel has overheated tires. We're about a second behind him going on to the straight, probably less than that, and we are soaking up slipstream, so by the end of this, we should definitely be closer than him. Staying in fifth gear, braking as late as we can, down into third, find the camber and get on that gas as early as you can. I, I know that Daniel is uh, slightly struggling with his tires at the moment, uh, but heading into the mountain it doesn't really matter what the gap is what matters is the gap coming out of the mountain so I'm gonna do all that I can to stay as close as I can to him if I maintain this gap I think I should be able to put a move down onto him at the end of the straight uh, it does look like he pulls away a bit there perhaps I lifted I'm not sure what I did uh, also there he's I mean now he's just fucking flying and I'm just like god damn he definitely goes wide here and this is going to let us catch up a little bit we take a very clean line through there Honestly, I over slow going down the mountain. I think I got into my head very slightly and uh, have to speed the car up a lot more than I would like to coming out of there. Very, very important corner here. Down to second, meet the apex, and we do meet the apex, but we definitely slowed down more than we needed to on that little downhill section that was that's kind of tied into that left hander, and that's a really bad habit of mine. So we have a, we, I mean, we definitely have the slipstream. Car number one is now out of the uh, situation, but it's not quite going to be enough. I mean, if, the, if it was about 100 meters longer, I may have been able to uh, send a dive bomb. But in this situation, uh, we're not going to do that. He just went through enough. Perhaps we could find something into this final corner or he could mess it up. That's kind of what I'm looking for. He moves over for a semi-defensive line. I'm not quite meeting the racing line, which gives me hope. Oh, but it's not quite going to be enough, and uh, we'll come across the line there for a P3, which he forgot to mention when he was uh, laying out the grid for everybody in the lobby. So uh, I'm I'm pretty happy with that. With that, uh, could have been better. Could have been a race win, but. P3 is fantastic. That is a podium position. And uh, there we are gaining 52 I rating. And we also gained some safety rating from that. Gained uh, quite a bit of safety rating. We're actually back. We're up into B class now, which is fantastic. It's been a while since we've been into B class. If you guys enjoyed this, uh, please feel free to click on the videos on your screen or check out my channel. I'm sure there's some stuff that you'd find entertaining.